So, whenever you all are ready, can you talk through what you've put together? Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so we put together a simulation of diffusion limited aggregation with some human computer interactive components. Okay. And the whole idea is using particles to simulate Brownian motion, and um, in doing so, you're able to recreate a lot of natural processes like snowflakes, you're able to do different wave-like structures are able to simulate smoke and so we wanted to really find the intersection between um, human computers and art and our main goal was integrating the IMU using a, like a hand motion so that we're able to have the user have whoever is using it um, actually interface with the, um, the particle motion itself. Okay. Yeah, and uh, the inspiration for this um, one was uh, some of the previous labs we've done as part of this course. Uh, sort of, this is reminiscent to our Boyd's lab, where sort of you can find these interesting like, emergent properties based on like parameter tuning, um, which we'll also see in a moment. So, so they're connected sort of in that way. Um, and also, just you know, if you Google like DLA, is what uh, it's called, you can find a lot of uh, cool demos of this sort of uh, you know kinds of simulations um, and they're just sort of really pretty and you can sort of like get lot you know just stare at them for a really long time kind of like a fire or something um, I think at least and so yeah that's that's where we came from I cool guess. Um, cool do you want to should we see it working yes. yeah we can okay. just grab all the features that we have okay yeah. that sounds great yeah so, so... Have... Yeah. Okay, do you want to talk about it okay yeah okay <laughs> sorry so um as <laughs> as of right now we um don't have any features on, so if you can see right now, it's see, I'll get a little closer. Of everything we have. Yeah, so um, some features they don't hard reset it. What's the capital R? There we go. Yeah. So some features that we have are just a baseline where it just starts aggregating, and this works by looking at all points around a specific pixel. And so we also met, we also managed to figure out how to do a somewhat off lattice collision detector, and that's able to allow us to increase speeds as well. And so if you increase the speed factor, so then you want to do like speed uh, five. Speed five. Do you want me to shake it? If you're able to increase the speed factor, it's then it's still able to have this randomness to the particle clustering as well. This is largely akin to like increasing the temperature of a bunch of particles, mm -hmm. right? And so they move sure. around and much faster. Um, and so we are performing like collision detection um, which is n not a given with the way that we're simulating things. And so, you know, you won't be able to like jump over any part of the crystal. And could you, would you mind just briefly describing, so we're seeing particles sort of moving around randomly in the back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you just briefly describe sort of what happens in this algorithm? Under what conditions do they <laughs> stop moving and so forth? Sure. So, um, th there are a few sort of parameters that you can tune to, to define exactly sort of when particles will aggregate, um, which is when they turn bright green, and uh, sort of how they move. But in general, the gist is that um, each particle uh, has a Gaussian distribution of where it will move in the next frame, in the next update. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, that's, that's distributed uniformly. And once a particle uh, is neighboring the aggregate, mm -hmm. or sort of with its motion would have collided with the aggregate if it were to, you know, sort of move in a straight line, um, if it surpasses a certain threshold for sort of the amount of aggregate surrounding it, it will then stick to the aggregate and aggregate itself. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. So I think so this one is just, we can if, as long as you're touching a particle, it'll aggregate. So it doesn't like look at all the surrounding ones and just sees if it's like touching. One. Okay. And it looks like in this particular run, am I correct that there's sort of a seed in the middle of the screen yes. from yes. which you start? Okay. And uh -huh. then everyone that sticks becomes an additional seeds right yes. Okay. Yes. Correct. Okay. yes so you're always allowed to sort of stick to particles that have previously stuck i guess so the bright green you know if you're touching bright green you become bright green basically and you stop moving is what so it is. cool yes um so this is like a very basic version um we can put on a glove yeah and uh, sure <laughs> and let's restart uh, so you're putting on a glove with a imu on the top correct okay. uh, uh, <gasps> wired up but um if we reset and then do tilt just t right? just t um now sort of 
we introduce a bias to the motion of our particles based on the orientation of our hands. So it's kind of, imagine you're looking at it top down. Uh -huh. So this is sort of facing up on your the back of your hand. Um, the particles will, you know, sort of like having gravity kind of, they will, they will be biased uh, to move in a certain direction. It, you can create sort of, you know. So you can sort of affect the direction of growth here. Yes. Um, another feature we have, uh, if I soft reset, is, um, what is it, SV0? Mm -hmm. SV. You can modify the speed by <laughs> shaking your hand really fast. So that's effectively oh, sort oh, of... Oh, uh, I think, I think you, you pulled out something on accident. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're effectively sort of increasing the temperature there? Yes. Okay. okay. Shook a little while. The wires come out. Uh, we're gonna have to restart. That's fine. We can we can pause and you can resume. Oh no, it's back. Is it? Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna hold it while you. Mm-hmm. It should be tilted. Yeah. And so. And this there is it's the speeding most up. For yes. HCI, or this is the most with our to our human interaction. Yes. And we also integrated some other factors as well. And so. <laughs> one. Right. Uh, one we can show cyclic as well. Is that talking? one? Which preset? To C. C's. See something? Should we reset it first? Sure. Yeah, and, and so... Then do you see oh, see what? Oh, do see five. Two. Let's see two. Yeah, and so for a lot of this motion, um, we had to do hard resets just uh -huh. because all the particles already started clustering. And so we managed to implement a type of cyclic behavior. And so um, depending on a specific integer that we define just in serial we're able to show how fast it's able to i guess turn black it's able to fade away and it's able to reset as a new particle on the screen wow. and that way it's able to have this continuous motion to it as well so in contrast to what you were previously showing the the particles that stick now free themselves after a certain amount of time Correct. and change, like change their colors they do so. right they decay and so so the gradient so their color you know become less bright sort of as time goes um yeah. on and they also eventually disappear and what's interesting about this i think is uh sort of properties can emerge sort of like like interesting visual properties um for example if we i think it's three right yeah three so for and then so so three introduced a seed at the, actually at the bottom left and if you leave it sort of tilting towards the left, or in fact in any direction, um, over time, if you just leave it, you'll sort of uh, see these sort of self-sustaining sort of blobs that grow and sort of pulse almost. Um, and we thought that was really cool. How that, interesting. Yeah, and so, you know, if you leave it um, not too tilted and at the right speed, which it should be, you can sort of there you go. these properties emerge. It's so, rem it, it's so sort of strangely biological looking. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes you can get uh, patterns that look like embers almost, kind of yeah. like in the wind. Um, a lot of it is dependent on the starting seed and sort of the structure you have when you start. And so it can be hard to like, tricky to just get right. But, sure. Um, so there's a, yeah. there's a, uh, an infectious <coughs> model called the SIR model. Susceptible and effective recovery, and you effectively made that. Interesting. Uh, but with dynamics, because the part is moving. Right. Yeah. So this is like a, a susceptible, a virus carrying insect population. Interesting. Um, That's really nice. Yeah, and so. Um, so these waves. Yeah, we get we get waves and was two uh, did you, did you two is just see, motion. Did you ever see a spiral pattern so, uh, so, uh, propagating spiral? So we've seen examples of like self-propagating sort of circles and like circles that sort of uh, concentrically sort of spread out. Um, we have had. I spent a lot of time trying to get those to, to happen here, and I couldn't manage to. Um, not entirely sure why, to be honest. Um, oh yeah, so here we just increase the speed, and now it mm -hmm. kind of looks like it's like pulsing. It does kind of have a pulsing. It kind of has a pulse to it, so I can get that. And if you're able to press V as well, you can just have it show. Oh yeah, you can get rid of the um, Black background particles, sort of, and yeah. so oh, yeah. it just 
see it aggregate. Wow. Okay. See it. Come on, you start. And then, um, additionally, if you want to include a seed of your own, then if you want to harvest it. Um, sure. And you can just set like a random seed, maybe like like one twenty five, two forty. Oh, so this is the corner. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, just do a capital R. What L one twenty five? Oh, do do capital R, Nate. Oops. Yeah, and then do like L one twenty five two forty. Two forty. Yep. Does that work? That or doesn't work. One twenty five. One twenty five. Are there another seed of it's, Yeah, so so it replaces the old seed. The aggregate stays, oh. but <laughs> the seed disappears. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if we mm -hmm. soft reset it now, it should. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. We just have the one seed, but. Yeah. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. In terms of uh, sort of things that were difficult and things that you know we could improve on, with, like more time. Um, so one thing is that we definitely seem to face memory constraints. Um, where you have a bunch of particles and you need to store some of their state, um, you have to also have a big backing pixel array. Um, and so we thought about various ways of, you know, trying to compress this, um, largely in order to get like more variants of color. This is only green right now. We have mm -hmm. a single uh, channel going into our VGA. Um, if we had, if we could sort of double, either compress by half or double the amount of memory we had, you know, we could have like, uh, more colors to play with, yeah. so that could make the cyclic uh, properties sort of interesting. Um, we also faced slowdown at some point with too many particles um, because of our collision detection, um, and so we could find ways to optimize that even more. Um, although it will be said that having too many particles sort of gets rid of the interesting behavior because things just saturate like immediately, like yeah. particles touch each other so fast that it just just blows up. Um, How many particles did we look, were we looking at here? This, I believe, was 8,000? No, I think we Seven or 8,000? Oh, yeah, something Seven like that. Seven or 8,000. Um, which we thought was like a good density, you know? We yeah. Went with the density. Yeah. Um, I'm noticing, too, that when you start with a seed, say, in the middle of the screen, mm -hmm. it grows quite symmetrically in all directions, mm -hmm. which I, I believe is an indication that your randomness is quite good. Yeah. Did you, when you were first implementing this, did you notice any sort of... Was there any symptom of like problems with your random number generation yes. that, that led to different kind of growth? <laughs> Definitely. Um, so simulating uh, uniform distributions uh, quickly is not super easy, um, especially sort of on you know these, these not super fast uh, microprocessors. Uh -huh. um, initially, we sort of, or, or I can talk about what we did in the end. I guess first is. Sort of, we sum a bunch of uniform distributions over time, which you know, if you remember your your probability theory, uh, approximates uh, uniform distributions. Um, you know, as you take more and more samples, and so we're Gauss. That, yeah. So 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 that's what we're sorry. Yeah, Gauss. Yeah. Um, that's what we're dealing with here, because actually coming with the uniform distribution for each particle was too uh, computationally expensive. Um, but there are some caveats with that. Um, for example, your the probability of getting a zero can be sort of double every other um, number if you like use modulo. Mm. Um, and so our initial versions of that sort of we, we, we face that problem, so they like move really slowly. And also there were some um, biases that occurred when we were sort of uh, turning our fixed fifteens that we use into like actual integers, you know, things get truncated. And mm -hmm. so there was like a bias to the left and we had to mess around with the signs and dealing with that and you know, how do you account for that so that it actually ends up being sort of uh, centered at the mean. It's a yeah. small bias, but it matters. Yeah. It does, yeah. yes, definitely. Especially, especially with something like this. Yeah. Yeah. And so that was, um, that was actually pretty fun to, yeah. to figure out. Um, it's really nice. Thank you all. Yes.